Hey, it's Will here from HairGuard. In this video, I want to talk to you about PRP for hair loss. I want to give you an updated, unbiased, and thoroughly researched review of PRP. After watching this video, you'll be able to decide if PRP is the right treatment for you, if it's effective, and if it's worth your time and money. You'll also know where it stands alongside the other hair loss treatments in terms of effectiveness. Now, I've never done PRP myself, so I don't have first-hand experience of if it works or not, but we do have quite a few studies along with customer feedback to know how well it works on average. If you're worried about your own hair loss, I'd recommend clicking the link in the description to discover the most powerful hair regrowth protocol that I've been using on my hair. Okay, so let's dive in. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. It's a non-invasive medical treatment for treating hair loss that uses the patient's own blood. It involves drawing some blood from the patient and then spinning it in a centrifuge. As the blood spins at fast speeds, the different parts of the blood separate according to their weight. The heavier parts go to the bottom, the lighter ones go to the top. Our blood contains three basic types of cells, white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets. The spinning process allows the doctor to remove the white and red blood cells, leaving a blood fluid or plasma that is, well, rich in platelets. The doctor then takes this platelet-enriched plasma and injects it into your scalp. Now, what's so special about these platelets? Why do we want more of them in the balding areas of the scalp? These cells are crucial in regulating the body's natural healing process. When you get a wound, platelets rush to the scene and clump to plug the hole and contain the blood. They also contain growth factors that can stimulate the body into naturally regenerating the tissues. For this reason, PRP is classed as a type of so-called regenerative medicine. It relies on the body's built-in healing and regeneration mechanisms. PRP started first being used in the 1970s and 80s. Originally, doctors wanted to use it to improve the outcomes of various types of surgeries. Gradually, its use has expanded to sports, medicine, orthopedics, and eventually cosmetic applications. Doctors discovered it can improve the quality of skin, reducing wrinkles, and giving it a more youthful appearance. And in the past 10 to 15 years, it's been increasingly used to treat hair loss. You can only get PRP at a doctor's office though. It's not something you can do by yourself at home. And there are two stages to it. Firstly, you have a series of two or three or so sessions spaced a few weeks apart. After this initial phase is completed, you move to the maintenance phase. Here you get one session every three to six months in order to maintain your gains. You probably noticed that when describing the number and timing of sessions, I was quite vague about it. And there's a reason for this. To this day, there's actually no standardized treatment protocol for the number and frequency of the sessions. You will get dramatically different recommendations from one doctor to the next. There's also massive differences in how the plasma is prepared. This involves both the spinning centrifuge process itself, in other words, how long and what speeds you spin the blood, as well as the process after it is spun and separated. So I won't go into the technical details here. Suffice it to say, there's massive differences from one clinic to the next. Then there are differences of where exactly on the scalp you inject and how many injections overall. So how effective is PRP for hair loss? Because the treatment protocols are so widely different, it's very difficult to lump studies together and get a good idea of how well this actually works. You're basically comparing apples to oranges. Be that as it may, this is what science is about, trying to make sense of data that resists an easy explanation. Which brings us to the latest review paper on the use of PRP to treat androgenetic alopecia, published this past January in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology. This was actually a review of reviews. In other words, it looked at all published scientific reviews of PRP for androgenetic alopecia. The researchers identified 27 different reviews. 24 of these 27 reviews 
give a favorable outcome. So in other words, they concluded that it is an effective treatment. On this basis, the researchers concluded the following. Number one, PRP for AGA is an effective treatment. So we'll return to this in a minute. Number two, a minimum of three treatments spaced one month apart should be administered in the initial phase. And number three, maintenance sessions every three to six months after that are beneficial. So what are the pros and cons? There are two big advantages of PRP. Firstly, it has no systemic or serious side effects. Secondly, it won't take up much of your time. At the maintenance phase, you're looking at one session every few months, and the rest of the time, you don't have to think about it. The big disadvantage, of course, on the other hand, is the huge cost. Depending on where you live, this can be in the order of a couple of thousand dollars for the initial phase, and then a few hundred dollars a year, at a minimum, for the maintenance. For most of us, this cost alone makes PRP a non-starter. Another thing to bear in mind is that while there are no serious side effects of PRP per se, it will involve a doctor sticking a needle in your scalp multiple times. The process can be painful and there will be swelling after each session. It's just not quite as simple as applying a topical and then walking away. So what's our overall take on PRP? Is it worth trying or just a waste of money? I'll give you our answer to that upfront and then flesh out the rationale behind it. And it's this, if A, money is no issue for you and B, you're highly motivated, then PRP might be worth it. Have a few sessions, give it a few months to work and then decide if it's worth continuing. On the other hand, if money is an issue for you and sadly for most of us it is, then don't even go there. PRP is not for you. Also, if you're not willing to put up with the discomfort and swelling that accompanies each session, then you'd probably be best to look at other treatment options. With regards to efficacy, looking at all the published data, PRP almost certainly has some effect against hair loss. So in other words, it is better than doing nothing or even taking a placebo, but the effect is probably small and in the majority of men and women, there won't really be any visible difference, any visible regrowth. The best that can be realistically expected is a slowdown or freezing of the hair loss, at least for some time. And behind all the millions of advertising dollars pumped into promoting PRP, the sad reality is that word of mouth on the treatment is actually just quite negative. Many forum posts and discussions from men who have tried it can be summarized in one sentence as, waste of money. So given how weak the results are and how expensive it is, it simply won't make sense for most people to go down the PRP path. And what's important to understand is that PRP is promoted almost exclusively by doctors and for good reason. As a business model, it's hard to beat. In one hour or less, they've made a good few hundred dollars. The process is simple to learn and administer and there are no serious side effects for them to worry about and the patient comes back for more. This is why there's been so much money spent on advertising PRP. It's just an awesome return on investment for the doctors and clinics. Compare PRP treatments to those that have sprung up organically among the hair loss community in recent years. Things like microneedling, ketoconazole, and scalp massages. These are low cost and almost certainly more effective than PRP. When it comes to value for money, the difference is orders of magnitude, which is why these treatments spread so rapidly among men and women with hair loss without any advertising and without doctors pushing them on their patients. PRP treatments remain only for the most motivated and well-heeled individuals. So that's all for this video. Leave a comment below if you've tried PRP or if you're thinking about trying it and let me know which topic you want me to cover next. Also, if you're worried about your own hair loss, then click over to hairguard.com to learn about the most powerful hair regrowth protocol that's working for me and a growing number of other people. If this video was helpful, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.